Welcome. Today I will show you what you can do with Blitz Report. The idea of Blitz Report is to have it available directly inside your Oracle EBS navigation. So when you work with Oracle EBS, you have the Blitz Report function here and you also have an Excel icon up here at the top. So whenever you want to run a report, you can click on this Excel icon and then our custom Blitz Report form opens directly with the report that you ran before. So if you run the same report over and over again, it automatically opens with that report. In this case, I ran the AI passed your invoice report before. And to run a report, you would click on run. And here on the second button, you see the stages of the request. It was showing pending and running. And once the request or the report is completed, it automatically opens the output file. The output file looks like this. So it has is pre-formatted. So it has the first line fixed and the the uh, auto filter set so that you can work with the data directly. Also the size of the columns is adjusted to the size of the data. So you don't have to do this uh, double click to adjust the size. So it comes out directly pre-formatted. And here on this screen, you have uh, up here the report name, then you have a layout template potentially. In this case, it's blank at the moment. And then you have parameters to restrict the data. And uh, as a user, you can select reports from the list here. So you can double click and then you bring up the list of reports. Right now I'm logged in as a developer. So that's why I see a long list of reports. As a user, you will only have a restricted list. For example, for general ledger, you want uh, in your general ledger responsibility, you would only see the GL reports and so on. And so let me show you based on this example, air past your invoice, what you can do with the layout. So every user can create their own layouts of the reports and that would be behind this template button. So you can click on this template button and then it opens an additional screen where as a user, you can select the columns you would like to see in the report. By default, all the columns are selected. Oh, let's go back. And uh, you can, for example, hide all of them and then only select certain columns. And you can also use the control and the shift key on your keyboard to multi-select records. And the next time you run a report it comes out exactly with these columns. So now we should see only these columns. You see now I only have a limited column set. And there's a little bit more than just selecting columns that you can do here on this layout. For example, we have a feature uh, to split up the data onto different Excel sheets. So here you can define sheet breaks. For example, if you would like to have every transaction class on a different sheet in your Excel output, then you can check this box here. And next time you run a report, it creates now an output file with one workbook and different sheets. So you see here one sheet for the credit memo class and one sheet for the guarantee and one sheet for the invoice and so on. And the last sheet always contains the audit trail. So you have the report name, the environment on which it ran, the run date, the concurrent request ID, and also the username and the responsibility from which the report was run. And you also have the SQL query. So this is useful for, uh, for IT support, for example. If a user comes to you and asks where the report came from, then you can, uh, can uh, know exactly the SQL query that that ran and you see the parameters in the template name. So that's the parameter sheet. And on this screen, you can also apply more layout options. So you could, for example, let me reset it. You can define aggregations. If the data set is very large, then you can pre-aggregate data. Um, for example, apply a sum or a max and so on. And you can also define pivots here on the right hand side. So you have the same fields that you will have in Excel. Let's assume you would like to pivot the data. Let me quickly search for the amount column. So here at the top, you can search for column names. Let's say we want all the amount columns pivoted by the transaction class and the invoice type. And then next time you run it again, here you see the stages, by the way, it was showing, now it shows running. And once it's opening, you see now we have a pivot sheet on uh, in the workbook as well. The first sheet still has the data, the second sheet is now the pivoting. And you see it's exactly the same as we have defined in the form. And these layouts, so by default, you see it has a default name called new template, but we could now also give it a name, let's say uh, test template. And then we could 
or let's use something more meaningful. Let's say pivot by class and type, something like that. And then we could share the template also with other users. So the, these templates, they have an ownership concept that uh, the person who creates the template is the owner and only the owner can modify it and but they can share it and with other users so for example on site level responsibility and user level so yeah let's make it available for everyone on site level so this is the the view for the users there are a little bit more layout options but i'm showing them a little bit later so this the users they can basically select reports here from the list and they can restrict parameters and they can define their layouts. But as a developer, you have the setup button here. And behind the setup button is the creation of the report. For example, if you, yeah, here we have the definition, the report name, the SQL query, then we have parameter restrictions here. So this is the definition of the parameters. And then we have security assignments. So we could, for example, directly as a developer, create a new report here. Let me do that. Let's say AP test and then use a very basic query. Okay, so now we have uh, the, a simple query, select staff from AP suppliers. And here we have the result. So all you need to do is enter an SQL query and run it. And then you have the output file in Excel and the report would be ready to assign to the users. And let me go back to the setup screen and add a little bit more data. So now we selected the data from AP suppliers. Let me add the AP invoice data to make it a little bit more interesting. Why is this all oh. like this? And So we need to link now the query by vendor ID and I would like to see all the, from the supplier table, I only want the vendor name and let's say the vendor number, that would be vendor number. And from the AP invoice table, we can select all the columns like this. Now the data set is a little bit larger because we select from the invoices table. So let's add parameters. Parameters we can just copy and paste from other reports if we don't want to type them. So let's enter, oh, let's say an invoice date from and also an invoice date to parameter. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have parameters for the invoice date range. Let me uh, query everything from 2005. And I'm so used, you see, I did not click on the run button. So I'm so used to the short key that uh, it's much quicker to navigate with the keyboard and with the mouse. Okay, so now we have the all the AP invoices for all uh, suppliers for January 2005. And we have all the columns from the AP invoice table. So you see there are a lot of columns and we probably don't need all of them because we many columns are empty here, attribute fields and so on. We could modify the SQL, but we can also now create a template again. And for example, only show the columns that we are interested in. For example, the invoice number, currency code, invoice amounts, and so on. Let me select some columns. Okay. And yeah, we can also move the amounts, let's say to the last position like this. So you can also directly type the new position number instead of clicking on the arrow up and down button that is helpful sometimes if you have a long list of columns and you want to move certain columns to the first positions position immediately. So you see now we have uh, columns from AP invoices. So let me add the pivot again, for example, by transaction source and the pivoting the amounts. Okay. So here on the right hand side, when we define a pivot, it comes out in the Excel default pivot format, which looks like this. But often finance users, they like to have a different layout or they would like to apply additional analysis or more use more of the Excel features that they are familiar with. So in this case, you could as a user, you could 
modify the Excel file after it was created. So let me do it like this and maybe move the currency code in a slicer instead so that we have a little bit more space. Where is the currency? Okay. And then we can also insert a uh, pie chart like this. And we can also add more aggregation. So for example, if you would like to see the largest suppliers, let's use the vendor name and look at the invoice amounts and add one more chart for that. For example, a bar chart. And then we can sort it to show the largest suppliers on top. And we can bring this onto the the same sheet as the pie chart so that it looks a little bit like a dashboard. Okay. And we can also apply more layout changes, for example, the color, or we could add, uh, let me add a company logo. That's probably interesting. So, so basically you can use any Excel standard feature. And then after, as a user, you have done all these modifications. Let me also apply conditional formatting here. And for example, yeah, we can also change the font like this, for example. Okay. So let's assume you have changed the layout like this, and you would like to have the output file always in this format. Then you can save the file. So it's still in the downloads folder on my laptop. And here in the tool, you have an upload functionality. So you can, as a user, you can simply upload an output file, which you have changed with additional layout options like this, and then it's uploaded. And that means next time you run it again, let me run it again for a different date range. For example, for the whole year 2007, instead of just January 2005. So you see now it's running again. And then we should see the output. So you see the new file is generated and it has now the whole history of 2007 instead in exactly the same layout. So you see now we have invoice dates from the whole year 2007. So that is the Excel uh, template upload functionality. And that's very useful for users because often they have some post uh, processing formatting, which they apply and in, with blitz report, they can do that only once and upload it. And every time they run a report, it comes out in exactly the format, which they need. And we have some more features, which are interesting for the users. For example, the possibility to run reports for multiple values at the same time. So let's assume here we have the uh, a dashboard with the largest suppliers. And if you would like to run a report only for these largest suppliers, let's say building manu management, allied manufacturing, iPrint and so on. So with Blitz report, you can copy a list of parameter restrictions. Let's say the supplier name. So we have the larger supplier names here on this sheet. And then we can use this multiple values checkbox and we can copy and paste a list of parameter restrictions. So that works with um, anything, inventory items, account numbers, anything that you can think of. And it's very powerful because you can use the output of an Excel file as a parameter restriction for a different report. And then there's something else which the users like a lot, and that is the possibility to assign the reports to Oracle standard screen. So as a developer, you have the possibility. So I now created this report and as a developer, you would make this report then once it's ready to use, you make it available for the users. And uh, that is done here through this assignment. So without assignments, it's not visible for any users, only visible for developers. That's the security concept. And you could, for example, assign a report uh, to the payables application. And that would mean that every user in a responsibility, which is linked to the payables application, would be allowed to run a report. Or you could assign it to an Oracle form. And that is, for, for me, the most exciting uh, feature because and that means that you can link this report to an Oracle standard form. Let's say here we have the invoice history, so we can link it to the AP invoice workbench. And that means when we go to payables here and then open the AP invoice workbench and we query invoices, let's say 
It's a very old test system, so we need to use an old date. So let's say we have an AP invoice open here from the Advantage Corp. So we can click on this Excel icon again. And now we have a list of specific reports linked to the invoice workbench. And at the top of the list is the, our custom, new custom report, the AP test report. And we can open it directly from here. We can also default parameter values. So for example, if you would like to run the report automatically for the supplier from which you currently have the invoice open, then you could configure as a developer, you would configure the um, the def parameter defaulting like this, so you copy the block name and the field name is vendor name. And then we can go to the report and complete this assignment setup. So we can say, if we come from the invoice workbench, the supplier name should be defaulted from the field vendor name, like this. And that means next time we open from here, it's only two mouse clicks and then it has defaulted the, uh, the supplier name from which we currently have the invoice open on the Oracle screen. And then we can drill down, for example, into the invoice history for the supplier. So now we have our report only for the Advantage Corp. And here on this sheet, we have the whole invoice history of that supplier. So these sort of drill downs are very useful. And especially in finance, we have a very popular uh, drill down and that is from the journals to the subledger transactions. So for example, if you have a specific journal open, let's say here, for example, this one here, cost management, or this one here, 16.079 million, you can click on this Excel icon again, and then you have a list of um, GL reports, and the top one is the account analysis, and you can run it directly from here for exactly the batch name and the journal name that we had he open here on the Oracle journal entry screen. And then in this case, we also have a, a template applied, which pivots the data by the account hierarchy. And then you have a nice drill down into the, uh, into the journal details. So in this case, we have the, the, the amounts pivoted in the account hierarchy. And on the first sheet, we have the details. So here first, we have all the columns coming from General Ledger. For example, the code combinations, where are the code combinations? Here's the chart of account, chart of account segments. And then we have here all the amounts. So this should be our 16.079 million. And then further to the right, so all these data, this is also available in the Oracle Standard Account Analysis Report. But what we have in this report here, which you do not have easily in the Oracle standard reports is the, are the subledger details. For example, in this case, the journal came from cost management, uh, from inventory, and we have transaction numbers starting from this column. All these columns come from the subledger. So in this case, we have, for example, information about the material transactions, which were sales order related. So for the sales order related ones, you see the sales order number and the customer number and customer names. And for the purchasing related material transactions, you see then purchase order number and supplier number and supplier names. And further to the right, we also see the material transaction details. So you see exactly, for example, uh, the quantities, the inventory items, item cost, and then the transaction type. So this is the drill down from um, Oracle standard forms into the tool. And then recently, so this was all reporting so far, but recently we have enhanced the tool to also allow uploads from uh, Excel back to Oracle because the feedback from our customers was that web ADI is not so user friendly and also not very fast. And for that reason, we have integrated an upload functionality so we have just started developing those uploads. So we, at the moment, we only have about 20, but the, the number will increase uh, very soon. So let me show you an example based on the pure requisition creation. So you select as a user, you would select one of these uploads and then you can choose what you would like to do. So if you want to create new requisitions, then you would choose the create mode and then the tool will generate an Excel file, which is empty, and then you can enter data and upload it. But you can also choose the create or update mode, and then you can query existing requisitions and modify them, or also create new ones. So let me query requisitions from 2006. 
And here again, you see the status pending, running, and an output. And then once the request is completed, we see an output file. In this case, it is uh, macro enabled and it has color highlighting. So that, for example, you, you see which columns you are allowed to update. The gray columns are read only and uh, the yellow columns are the required columns. So if you create new records, you need to provide uh, the yellow columns or values for the uh, required yellow columns. So in this case, we are not allowed to update the requisition number for existing requisitions, but we are allowed to update the header description and so on. So let me, in this case, let me just copy and paste the item description and enter it as the header description as a test. Okay, so we can copy and paste it like this. And then the tool understands which records were modified and will process these uploads. We can also create new records. Let me just to be quicker, let me just copy some of these yellow columns. Okay, so we have two new rows. We could also manually create records. So here we have a list of value validation, very similar to Oracle Forms. So for example, that we have a valid inventory organization and they deliver to location. Let's say one is Iris and we need a requester and let's say there should be supplier. And then we need an inventory item. Let's see what we have. For example, a forklift battery. Let's see. And that is an expensive one. Let's say we only want one. We could also modify the price. This is just defaulted. Let's say $1,180. And we wanted it on the 1st of January 2023 already. Okay, so now we have some updates and we have new records. And as a user, you would save then the file and you would upload the file, the complete file from the downloads folder. And that's why this tool is much, much faster than Web ADI and other tools on the market because we process the whole data set in bulk on the server. So for example, you could even use it to update hundred thousands of inventory items and it will, will still work and then process the data in bulk on a server. In this case, unfortunately, everything is ended in error. Need by date needs to be greater than today. And here the charge account is invalid. And here the revision is invalid. But we can now in the output file, which shows these errors, we can now correct the data. For example, here the need by date, we can say this should be, let's say 30th of October 23. And then let's hope that we can process these records. Okay. The other ones, we could also look at this one. The charge account is invalid. What can we do? We could probably copy and paste the charge account information from previous rows and hope that it will fix this problem. Okay, let's see. Now I'm trying to reprocess these records. Let's choose the file and upload it. Now it's running and after that is complete, we would see then the result again. Okay, looks better. So we had uh, a little bit of success. So the last one is still, the revision is still invalid for this item because I didn't change it, but we have the, the updates processed and we also have new requisitions created. So here you see these two. So we would now find these newly created requisitions in Oracle. And yeah, that's mainly, that's the functionality of the new upload. There's of course a lot more to show around this tool. So it has automated import options from different other tools from via yeah, publisher, from enterprise command centers, and especially from discoverer. So we have discoverer migration fairly automated so that you can use the tool to quickly migrate all your discoverer workbooks into the tool and yeah, if you uh, would like to see more, please reach out to us and uh, we can arrange a personalized demo. Thanks.